Kenneth McGriff was born September 19, 1959, in South Jamaica, Queens, New York. Both of his parents were employees of the City Transit Department. McGriff attended PS 140 Edward K. Ellington for elementary school, and later Francis Lewis High School in Fresh Meadows, Queens. He was given the 5% name, Supreme, in 1971 when he was a student at Catherine and Count Basie Junior High School 72, located in a nearby Rochdale Village neighborhood. The 5 percenters are members of a sect of Islam founded in 1964 by Clarence 13X, a former student of Malcolm X. Before being dubbed the Supreme Team, McGriff Circle, into which he recruited his nephew, Gerald Prince Miller, as his second in command, was initially referred to by outsiders as the Peace Gods, a reference to the phrase commonly used by group members as a greeting. Though McGriff is Miller's uncle, the former is merely two years the latter's senior and the two essentially grew up together. Initially, the group's criminal activities consisted mainly of burglaries and bank robberies. In order to decrease tensions in the area and to more readily repel rival groups, the Peace Gods allied themselves with the Seven Crowns, a 1970s South Jamaica street gang, whose membership included future drug kingpins Lorenzo Fatcut Nichols and Anthony Pretty Tony Furtado. McGriff started his drug career as a stash house guard for heroin kingpin and Hollis, Queen's native Ronald Ronnie Bumps Bassett. The group got involved in drug dealing in 1983, selling small quantities of heroin and cocaine on the corner of Sutphin Boulevard and 150th Street. The group maintained a high profile, partying at popular New York City nightclubs including the Latin Quarter and the Red Parrot in Manhattan, Brooklyn's Empire Roller Dome, and Disco Fever in the South Bronx. Southeast Queens was effectively split into different territories by the various drug traffickers that shared the area, including Lorenzo Nichols, Tommy Mickens, the Corley brothers, Claude Skinner, and the Furtado brothers. The renamed Supreme Team used the Baisley Park Houses housing project, with its 1,057 residents, as a base of operations. A distinguishing feature of the group was the fact that it was racially integrated, while the majority of members were African-American, its ranks were comprised of Latinos as well. On July 1, 1984, Gerald Miller was released from prison after serving a sentence for a burglary conviction and immediately resumed his position as McGriff's second-in-command. Miller was introduced to the group's narcotics business and would quickly become McGriff's chief enforcer. In 1984, the Supreme Team incorporated crack, the freebase form of the drug cocaine, into its repertoire. The organization's brands of crack, marketed as Thriller and Ghostbuster, proved tremendously successful and by the end of 1985, the Supreme Team had expanded outward from South Jamaica to dominate the drug trade in other southeastern Queens neighborhoods, including Springfield Gardens and St. Albans. McGriff divided the organization into four separate crews, each led by a lieutenant. One way in which the four divisions distinguished themselves was by using different colored tops for the vials, in which they packaged crack and heroin. McGriff directed each crew to use a unique color for vial tops. Jones crew used red tops, Johnson's used orange, Anthony's used blue and Miller used yellow. The organization's members routinely wore red jackets with the word, Supreme, displayed on the back. They also favored dressing in military fatigues. Workers who made direct sales to crack users, routinely shouted the phrase, no singles, no shorts, meaning, don't pay with single dollar bills and don't ask for discounts. The organization guarded against law enforcement by using coded language and employing sentries equipped with walkie-talkies stationed on the rooftops of the five, eight-story buildings that comprised the Baisley Park houses. In early July, 1985, a Supreme Team stash house located at 231st Street was robbed of $80,000 worth of cocaine and cash and subsequently, a shooting occurred at another stash house, located on Guy Boulevard, a major thoroughfare in Queens. On September 10, NYPD narcotics officers led by Sergeant Clyde Foster executed a search warrant, which cited unregistered confidential informant sources, for the 231st Street location and another address linked to McGriff. Police made seven drug arrests at the first stash house and seized narcotics and rifles. McGriff and David Robinson were among the five arrested during the raid on another location, located on 231st Street in Cambria Heights. Police seized $35,000 in cash, 8 pounds of cocaine and heroin, 8 handguns, and drug paraphernalia including vials and scales. 
McGriff pleaded guilty to criminal possession of a controlled substance in the second degree on May 19, 1986. On April 8, 1998, a four-month undercover investigation culminated in a late-night raid of the Bisley Park houses was conducted by the NYPD and Queen's District Attorney's Office. The raid resulted in the arrests of 24 members of the Supreme Team, including longtime member Damon Kersley. Besides Kersley, the 24 men and women arrested on drug charges included his older sister Dion, Audrey Lee, Damon Belk, Andrew Hobson, brothers Javier and Gabriel Reyes, and Mark Haynes. Troy Smith and William Gillard were arrested on weapons charges. The organization is estimated to have generated revenue in excess of $500,000 per year from the sale of crack, cocaine, and marijuana prior to the arrests. On December 11, 1999, longtime Supreme Team Lieutenant Colbert Johnson was shot to death by rival drug trafficker and aspiring rapper Eric E. Moneybag Smith. Surveillance footage showed Johnson's body being dropped off at a local hospital by another man driving an SUV, widely believed to be McGriff, hours after Smith shot Johnson in the leg. Smith was shot to death himself seven months later on July 16, while talking on a cell phone and sitting in his Lincoln Navigator on 111th Road in Queens Village, Queens. Smith was hit with 10 of the 40 shots fired into his vehicle. He was found with a loaded gun next to his foot. On August 24, 2001, authorities raided a stash house in Owings Mills, Maryland linked to McGriff and seized crack, cocaine, heroin, a stolen Ruger 9mm handgun, $30,000 cash, and videotapes. Police also found a certificate, under one of McGriff's aliases, for the completion of a handgun training course, in nearby Glen Burnie, Maryland. The raid followed the double murder of McGriff associate Caron Russell Claret and Dwayne Thomas, that occurred in the parking lot outside of the Stash House, located at the Red Run Apartments complex, two days earlier. Investigators alleged that another of McGriff's business associates, Victor Wright, murdered Claret because McGriff suspected him of deciding to cooperate with investigators following his arrest four months prior in North Carolina, during which he was found with two kilograms of cocaine. It's believed that Thomas was murdered in order to eliminate him as a potential witness. Wright and McGriff associate Vash T. Paylor were charged with drug trafficking following the raid. Wright was also charged with murder. McGriff was subsequently arrested at the Lowe's Hotel located in the ritzy Miami Beach, Florida neighborhood South Beach, and charged with possession of a firearm by a convicted felon on December 28, 2002. On June 2, 2003, he was sentenced to 37 months in federal prison after pleading guilty. Around the same time, he was facing pending New York state gun charges stemming from a July 2001 traffic stop in Harlem, during which he was found with $10,000 cash, a driver's license registered to an alias and a loaded .40 caliber handgun in his waistband after police pulled over his BMW. On January 3, 2003, the FBI and NYPD executed a raid on the offices of the successful rap label, Murder Incorporated Records, which generated $200 million from 1999 to 2003. Though no one was arrested, agents seized hard drives, laptops and business documents, in an attempt to find evidence of the company laundering money, in collusion with McGriff. McGriff reportedly forged a friendship with Murder Incorporated Records founder and fellow Queens native, Irv Gotti and his brother Christopher Lorenzo, in 1994, following an introduction at a music video shoot in South Jamaica, after his release from prison. At the time, Lorenzo was employed as a rep for TVT Records. The raid was in connection to a probe launched by the U.S. Attorney's Office in Brooklyn, New York. McGriff made a cameo appearance alongside Lorenzo in a music video for rapper Ja Rule. That same year, McGriff's nephew, Lawrence McGriff, was released after serving a 16-year sentence in prison. He is now Vice President of Marketing and Promotion for Universal Def Jam Records. A 2003 affidavit by IRS investigators revealed that federal agents suspected McGriff of ordering the murder of rapper Curtis 50 Cent Jackson, which resulted in his near-fatal shooting in Jamaica, Queens on May 25, 2000. The affidavit attributes McGriff's alleged motive to his having been angered by Jackson's song, The Ghetto Quran, in which he discusses McGriff's criminal past. 50 Cent's crack-addicted mother, Sabrina, is believed to have sold cocaine for the Supreme Team at the time of her murder at the age of 23 in 1984. 
50 Cent has stated publicly that his mother was asphyxiated when someone drugged her drink, causing her to lose consciousness, and subsequently closed all the windows before turning on the gas in her apartment. Following a two-year joint investigation conducted by the FBI, ATF, NYPD and IRS, McGriff was charged with murder in aid of racketeering in a sweeping indictment on January 26, 2005. Murder for hire charges were eventually added to the indictment as well. Both McGriff and Victor Wright were charged with narcotics distribution and murder. Dennis Crosby and Nicole Brown were added to the indictment for their part in Eric Smith's shooting death. Eventually, McGriff and Emmanuel Mosley were charged with murder in connection with the deaths of both Smith and Smith associate, Tony Singleton. On January 26, 2005, McGriff and employees of Murder Inc., including CEO Irv Gotti, his brother and company vice president Chris Gotti and rapper Ja Rule, were charged with laundering over $1 million of McGriff's narcotics profits through the label and the film Crime Partners and its accompanying soundtrack. The indictment also sought the forfeiture of any and all assets of Murder Inc. records, McGriff, the Lorenzos, Robinson and Brent. Former Supreme Team member Philip Banks, who'd been incarcerated from 1997 to 2004, was arrested on February 17, 2005 for assault, credit card fraud and weapons charges. Banks agreed to testify against McGriff in exchange for leniency. On September 21, 2005, Cynthia Brent pleaded guilty to a minor financial crime in exchange for the dismissal of her money laundering charges. Ronald Robinson pleaded guilty to tax evasion in exchange for the dismissal of his money laundering charges. During the money laundering trial, former McGriff associate John Ragen testified for the prosecution that McGriff admitted responsibility for 50 cents near fatal shooting to him. Ragen testified that McGriff allegedly told him, I got him. They caught him coming out of his grandmother's house and he got into a car, and that's when he got shot. Ragen, however, was never cross-examined by defense attorneys, who successfully lobbied the court to have 50 cents shooting disregarded as irrelevant. After a three-week trial, Murder Inc. Records founders Herb Gotti and Christopher Lorenzo, who were tried separately from McGriff, were acquitted on all counts of money laundering on December 2, 2005. Christopher Lorenzo was represented by famed mob lawyer Gerald Shargel. On March 22, 2006, prosecutors notified McGriff, Victor Wright, Dennis Crosby, Nicole Brown and Emmanuel Mosley that they were seeking the death penalty for each of them. On April 4, the death penalty motions were withdrawn for all but McGriff. During the trial, which began January 8, 2007, prosecutors alleged that between 1997 and 2003, what they labeled the McGriff Enterprise, distributed more than 150 kilograms of cocaine, 30 kilograms of heroin and 1.5 kilograms of crack. Emmanuel Mosley testified in Brooklyn Federal Court that he murdered Eric Smith and three months later, Tony Singleton, at a Jamaica Queen sports bar, at McGriff's behest for $25,000 each. Mostly Aslo testified that McGriff had also paid him to murder original Supreme Team member Nathan May, who ultimately eluded his would-be killer. Following a three-week trial and three days of jury deliberations, McGriff was convicted of conspiracy to distribute narcotics, racketeering and murder conspiracy on February 1, 2007. Though the prosecution pushed for the death penalty, McGriff was sentenced to life in prison without parole. McGriff was initially imprisoned at the ADX Florence Supermax Federal Prison, in Fremont County, Colorado. Since 2011, Kenneth McGriff has been imprisoned at the USP Lee Maximum Security Federal Prison located in Pennington Gap, Virginia.